Good day, fellas! How are you going? Now, as you know, one of the things I love about cosplay is going to conventions and getting the chance to meet and talk to a bunch of different people, both cosplayers and non-cosplayers alike. Now, over the years, you tend to notice an influx of different cosplays, depending on what anime is popular at the time. Now, I started cosplaying myself back in 2007, so that's about the time when I started to notice these trends emerging. So, in today's video, I thought it'd be a bit of fun just to kind of go back to 2007 onwards and see if we can recall which cosplays were popular for those particular years. Now, keep in mind, these popular trends are based on conventions that I attended in Australia, so it might be a little bit different for you. That being said, can you remember these series being popular? Was it the same? where you lived? Let's go. And one of the most popular things in 2007 was a series called Full Metal Alchemist. Although the anime itself finished in about 2004, I think that was about the time where our Australian distributor decided to release it on DVD. So you saw plenty of Edward Elricks running around, clapping their hands together, and taking pride in being short. Another big thing of 2007 was a series called The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Now this is an anime which pretty much defined that entire decade of anime for some reason where you'd find heaps of people running around those iconic blue skirts and yellow headbands and every second skit was pretty much a Haruhi dance skit. 2008, the most popular one of that time is something called Death Note. Now because the main characters all had relatively simple outfits, it was a great place for everybody to start cosplaying. But because of this, every convention 2008 you went to had an army of lights and elves and mises all running around the place. Myself included. Another big one of 2008 was a great series called Vampire Night. Now this series was great because everybody liked vampires at the time. Maybe that's something to do with Twilight. But it was probably the best looking school uniform you could ever see. So you got to see these really cool black and white jackets uh, hovering around a con and even at some social events I went to. 2009, Code Geass. Code Geass, I watched through it and I bawled my eyes out and it's no surprise that it was one of the most popular series at the time as well. It had a variety of different characters and a bunch of different costumes, everything from simple uniforms to really elaborate dresses, so a lot of cosplayers jumped on board that one. Another big one in 2009, Macross Frontier. Anyone who's familiar with the Macross series knows it's primarily about mechas and robots fighting and so on and so forth, but Macross Frontier delved a little bit into pop idols. So the main two idols, Cheryl Gnome and Ranka Lee, they had lots of different outfits, and I think people got their first taste of what it was like to dress up as a diva, so that's pretty popular too. 2010. The most popular thing from that year that I can recall, a series called Black Butler Kuroshitsuji. I think it was a time in which people kind of found that master-servant kind of relationship theme pretty appealing that you could cosplay with your friends and have a bit of fun with it. Not to mention all the fancy Victorian era costumes that were really fun to make. Another big one from 2010 was Vocaloid. Now Vocaloid by this stage had been around for a few years. Uh, Miku herself was released in 2007, Luke was 2009, but come 2010 it really made its mark on a lot of the cosplayers with its colourful outfits and there being a character that just about everybody could see. 2011, Puella Magi Madoka Magica. This was the year that magical girl animes kind of made their resurgence and did its rounds. Sailor Moon's always going to be a stock staple at just about every convention, but this is one of the ones in which you see a really popular magical girl anime that everyone seemed to have been watching at the time. With the colourful costumes, unique characters, and a bit of a dark storyline, it was pretty popular, so... Magic Girls Ahoy! And when I first recorded this video, I forgot to mention this series, but another big one in 2011 was a nice series called Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Now this was a series by Gonix that was really fun to watch with all the crude humour that was in it. And all the girls did a really sexy version of Panty or a cute version of Stocking and everything in between of all the different costumes. And you'd see the boys dressing up as Brief, carrying the bags for the girls. 2012, Sword Art Online was unleashed upon the world and cosplayers from this series were everywhere. It took on the population of video games and being stuck inside them. Uh, it's something that the Dot Hack series did a few years back, but the prevalence of online games probably weren't as big back then. And here we've got the ideal, perfect, cool guy able to rescue the beautiful, dashing heroine. And if you didn't like the main two characters, there were a bunch of side characters you could do as well. So there was something for everybody there. Sword Online cosplayers really saturated conventions back in 2012, and you're still going to find them today. The big colossal hit of 2013 was Attack on Titan. Cosplaying for this series meant that you could become one of the soldiers in their iconic brown jackets. Uh, you know, white pants and green capes, without actually having to designate yourself to a particular character because they existed all throughout the series. Pair that along with the 3D maneuver gear, probably the most interesting weapon that we've seen in anime in many years, 
it became a pretty popular choice to cosplay. 2014, commenced the reign of Love Life. That's the year that dancing idols were discovered and conventions have never been the same since. We've got a variety of different characters, a bunch of different costumes that you can do both individually or with the group. And you can even practice some really cool dance routines that you can show off at conventions to other people. In 2015, Love Life continued its onslaught of dominating the cosplay scene and lots more dance groups kind of emerged and it became quite commonplace to see these dance routines being performed at conventions everywhere. Mind you, the hype in the crowd and how fun the dances are, it's actually a lot of fun to go watch, so give it a try if you haven't watched it yet. Now, for those not quite into dancing, sports anime kind of made a resurgence here and one of the big ones at the time was something called Haikyuu. Haikyuu was about a bunch of boys playing volleyball, looking all cool and manly and people made their own OTP as they always do. But back in 2015, you'd find these orange and black uniforms floating around just about everywhere, along with a bunch of volleyballs. 2016, the second season of Love Live was released and it continued down its warpath of dominating the hearts and minds of everybody everywhere. So while Love Live still continued its dominance in the cosplay scene, another series that you would have seen people cosplaying at the time was something called RE0. Something that's a little bit of a fresh air where people got to dress up in cute maid outfits again and some fantasy costumes. You can see them floating around. And just last year in 2017 we had a new entrant on the scene of most popular cosplay which would have been My Hero Academia. Now although it's been a shonen manga for a few years now, the anime itself was only released the previous year in 2016 which is when I think a lot of people kind of started to take notice of it. And boy did they take notice, they began popping up at conventions bit by bit in increasing amounts. I mean it's great, just like any good shonen mangas there were heaps of different interesting characters you could choose from all with their own very unique looks and special abilities called quirks and you could either cosplay in a group with a bunch of different people that you never knew before with just either a simple gym uniform or even in their very iconic battle outfits which was which looked pretty cool to make to be honest. Another thing that made its way into the scene last year was all of the Fate cosplayers. And this is probably likely due to the release of the English version of the mobile game of Fate called Fate Grand Order. We have a bunch of loved old characters getting really new updated outfits and a bunch of new characters just getting a fresh look all together in the game. The huge backstory and really detailed character costumes, there really was something for everybody to cosplay. And they have it, about 12 years of cosplay trends that I've noticed. Were these trends the same in your country? Did you follow some of the trends as well? Let me know in the comments below. And this weekend I'm heading off again, this time to Melbourne for a little bit. So I'm just going down to catch up with a bunch of friends and film a bunch of videos in collaboration with a bunch of cool people, so that promises to be really fun. And it so happens that Oz Comic Con happens to be on that weekend as well in Melbourne, and I might pop in for a day, so if you're attending, I might catch you there. As always, really appreciate you guys, thanks so much for watching. That's it for now, I'll catch you guys in another video soon. Bye.